Uh, this is a Fuji Sue Siemens Lifebook P8020, the lightest computer in the world with a built-in DVD drive. And in this video, I will show you how to open it. So first, you want to open the bottom side of it and uh, remove all the screws. And then, before you try to pry open the bottom cover, you have to remove the VGA port first because the VGA port is held in place by two bolts and if you just try to open it, you might damage the VGA port which has happened before um, so you want to use a plier or some other tool that's designed for the job just loosen the, the bolts here then you can unscrew them by hand. And there. Now you just have to gently remove it this way. And the mother and now with the back cover removed, the system internal parts are, are exposed. And first you notice here, here's a uh, empty plastic sleeve, which is used to hold the hard drive. I think Fujisu used the plastic sleeve in order to save the weight from not using a metal mounting bracket for the hard drive. And here's the DVD drive. And here we have the main board with the CPU fan and the CPU underneath it. The main board is a small piece that is connected to other boards by ribbon cables and various connectors. And on this module you have the 3G wireless modem using cellular network made by Sierra Wireless. And this small module is a Intel wireless LAN and uh, here you have the two slots for DDR3 SDRAM to remove the keyboard you want to use a very thin prying two like this and lift a little bit upward this plastic panel here and so you will give enough space to allow the latches under the keyboard to be removed. Before I can remove the system board I have to open the keyboard and disconnect all the cables that are attached to the system board. So first, I remove the keyboard ribbon cable by pulling it out straight. And the next one is the ribbon cable that connects to the trackpad. And this is the cable connecting to the speakers. And this is for the microphone. So now I freed the main board from all the cables. Now I remove the CPU fan first and remove the cable that's attached to the board. And the next step is to remove any one of these other cables, which I decided to remove this ribbon cable that's attached to the wireless module and put replicator board. And here's a screw that's holding down the port replicator and wireless module board.
To remove this board, you have to pay attention because there is a metal that is holding down the board. So you want to pull up the port replicator and slide it outward to make it free. And now you want to remove the ribbon cable that's attached to the CD-ROM drive by flipping upward the brown latch that's holding it in place. And here is the power input cable. Just remove it from its socket. And now you can remove this display cable that's used to connect to the LCD or LED panel. Here's another screw holding down the main board. On the other side of the board, there is still one cable not removed, which is not accessible from the keyboard side. So you have to flip the board over in order to remove it. Just flip upward the brown latch and now the cable is free from the board. And then you can remove the board. And here it is. And you can see the RAM slots. And on the other side, you can see the dual CPU. And this is the backup battery.